The Earth is a truly beautiful planet, made up of 71% water and home to approximately 1.2 million different species of animals. Of that 1.2 million species of animals, approximately 700,000 of those species live in the world's ocean. But the world is ever-changing. There are constantly more and more species of animals being discovered each and every day. However, there are also many animals dying each day. Plastic pollution is the leading cause of death amongst marine life. Plastic pollution is directly caused by humans. What started off as a great invention has spiraled out of control and is now destroying our oceans and world around us. If we are not careful, plastic will destroy our world and our oceans, leaving our world a wasteland inhabitable by humans. When looking into plastic pollution further, you will find that the problem stems from third world countries. Many of these countries do not have landfills or systems to discard their garbage. As a result, they've become accustomed to throwing out all of their trash in only places that they don't have to see it. That is either the ocean itself or a river or stream that eventually leads to the ocean. <laughs> The first time plastics were found in our oceans was in a study in the 1960s and 70s as a result of a scientist conducting plankton study. He found an abundance of plastic pellets floating in the North Atlantic water. Floating plastic waste has been shown to accumulate in five subtropical gyres that cover over 40% of the world's oceans and are found in the North and South Pacific Oceans, the North and South Atlantic Oceans, and the Indian Ocean. Subtropical gyres are ring-like systems of ocean currents rotating clockwise in the Northern Hemisphere and counterclockwise in the Southern Hemisphere caused by the Coriolis effect. In the 1980s and 1990s, things like plastic bags and use of microbeads in cosmetics began to be used in the United States. These plastics are called single-use plastics. In other words, they are used once and then discarded. The problem with these plastics is they do not decompose or break down. And due to the high demand on these goods, there is an abundance of them being made every day with no way to discard them. This leads to them ending up in our oceans, inflicting detrimental effects on the animals and oceans where they are found. Countries such as Bangladesh in 2002 became the first country to ban plastic bags. This was a result of the bags clogging drains during severe storms and causing floods. Shortly after this in 2007, San Francisco became the first U.S. city to ban plastic bag use. Later, in 2014, Netherlands banned microbeads in cosmetics. This trend of banning single-use plastics is continuing to grow. If the world was able to ban single-use plastics as a whole, the plastic pollution problem would be much less severe. In 1997, Charles Moore discovered the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. The finding of the patch really brought attention to the plastic waste problem. Located off the coast of California, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch spans 1.6 million square kilometers. That is the size of France three times and contains 1.8 trillion pieces of plastic. That is 250 pieces of plastic for each person in the world. However, even though it is located so close to the United States, the United States is not a leading contributor to the garbage patch. Countries such as China and India contribute to the majority of the trash. The trash is taken from their shores and moved across the earth by the ocean currents, pushing the trash to one location, the Great Pacific Garbage Patch. Plastic pollution does not just affect people. 100 million sea animals are killed each year as a result of plastic pollution. A recent study showed that 90% of seabirds had plastic in their stomach, and 40% of the seabirds offspring die from being fed plastic by their parents. And it's not only birds. Another study shows that over 50% of sea turtles eat plastic or have been found to have plastic inside of them. Another study on dolphins, whales, and seals in the UK found that 100% of dead animals on the UK coast have ingested plastic. In southern Spain in April of 2018, a sperm whale was ashore with 64 pounds of plastic inside its stomach. Plastic pollution is directly killing animals and there is nothing they can do about it. Animals do not have the ability to distinguish plastic from food. If it looks like, behaves like, or smells like food, they will eat it. 
Unlike many problems in the world, plastic pollution is actually portrayed a lot through social media. There are tons of different social media accounts, movements, and hashtags that try to help combat plastic pollution. Some of these include Instagram accounts such as Oceana, 4Ocean, and Sea Legacy. These accounts work on organizing many different types of outreaches and movements to raise money to help combat pollution. There are also hashtags such as Save the Turtles or Save the Wave that allows many people to join together to help induce change. On top of that, there are many companies that use recycled plastic in their products while donating some of their profits to help plastic pollution. One of these companies is SandCloud. SandCloud makes jewelry, water bottles, and many more items for recycled plastics while donating part of their proceeds to help clean our oceans. Plastic pollution is already here. The Great Pacific Garbage Patch alone only covers 1.6 million square kilometers. And to make that even scarier for you, only 1% of garbage floats. Plastic pollution is already a major problem. Ocean cleanup programs and getting plastic out of the water should not be our first concern. When listening to a TED talk by David Katz, he uses a very interesting comparison. He says, if you see a sink overflowing, you don't start cleaning up the water on the floor first, you instead turn off the water. That same constant holds true for plastic pollution. Instead of trying to find a way to get plastic out of the water, we instead need to find a way to stop putting plastic in our ocean. One way to do this is to outlaw single-use plastics and directly cut off plastic pollution at its source. Another way to help prevent plastic pollution is to find a better way to discard plastic in third world countries. Third world countries account for the majority of plastic pollution. In areas of India and most of Africa where there are no plastic management programs, people often just throw their trash in the river. In India, the plastic in the ocean is so bad that they need to clean the beach every hour or it continues to build up on the beach. Plastic pollution is a very dire topic. If something does not change soon, it will result in detrimental effects on the planet, animals, and humans.